Hello sports fans and welcome back to another edition of the Pioneers Weekly Football Preview where we take a look at all of the week's high school, college, and professional ranks games. We're going to start this week with two local teams squaring off in CSAA action. Morley Stanwood uh, versus Reed City. Reed City coming off a huge win in the opener over rival Big Rapids. Morley Stanwood uh, with a pretty big setback in week one against Lakeview. Uh, well, let me start off talking with uh, one of our cohorts here, Greg Buckner. Greg, talk a little bit about, first about Reed City uh, and what they were able to do to, to build an early lead against Big Rapids in the opener. Yeah, you know, obviously uh, Reed City last Thursday showed why they're still the class of the CSAA. They came out, I'm um, talking to Monty Price before the game last week, he said, you know, Reed City football, we want to establish ourselves in the trenches on the offensive and defensive lines. And that's what they did on Thursday against Big Rapids. They came out, especially on the ground, uh, John Green for Reed City, you know, in the first half he had 191 yards, three touchdowns alone. And, uh, you know, that really opened up the passing game for Chad Samuels, and he even had some nice runs on the ground as well. So I think, um, you know, like Monty said, that's what they do. They start it up front, and that's where they build off from there, and that's how they're able to really build a big league on Big Rapids. Now, yeah, it's a Morley Stanwood team that's hurting right off the bat. Big loss against Lakeview, 36-3. to Also a team that's kind of wounded right now. Both of the Cary boys are out. I know they yep. have a couple of other injuries. How do they uh, turn things around here in week two and, and try to, you know, make this a game against Reed City? Um, it's it's going to be tough. I, it's, it's no lie, it's going to be a real tough game for them, but um, I think the biggest thing last week that really killed them was turnovers. I know fumbles were a huge issue for them, and then they also, they had a big uh, splash play there that really got them behind right off the bat. So I think for Morley Stanwood, they really got to establish that confidence right off the bat to let themselves know that they actually have a chance, because I think if Reed City is able to jump on them early, the game's going to be over. All right, we're going to start it off. Let's get all of your picks here. Let's start with Brandon Fountain. Brandon, who do you got this week? I'm going to take Reed City. Just after last week's uh, big game against Big Rapids, I think they're going to continue on, make it 2-0. Bob? Uh, Reed City, this one I don't think will be close. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, I got Reed City big in this one uh, until Morley Stanwood can get some more healthy bodies. Yeah, I got to go with Reed City as well. Morley, uh, just a little too young and, like you said, too many injuries, and I don't think they can really overcome that right now. Okay, uh, looking at this week's high school game of the week coming up here next, uh, we have Nuego traveling to Chippewa Hills. Chippewa Hills coming off a 21-0 uh, win in the opener against Central Montcalm. Nuego coming off a win against Holton in a high-scoring game uh, in week one. Bob, this was a, a Chippewa Hills team that a lot of people didn't know what to expect from. Very young team, unproven in a lot of the skill positions. How did they build on this and pick up a big win against a Nuego team that a lot of people consider one of the two best teams in the CSAA? It's funny because you know we you talk about Chip, you know we don't know what they have, but every year they have one of the best defenses around, and that's something that goes credit to uh, Nate Atheridge and the defensive coordinator over there. They always play st strong defense, and that's just kind of that staple. They make up the rest on the offense, and they do well. Uh, this week they're going to have to be strong defensively. Um, New Ego runs the wing tee, uh, much like Reed City will or does. Um, New Ego is going to just pound it down your throat, and it's going to be you know me against you. Here it comes, and you know Chip's got to be ready for it. Now a New Ego team. This is a team that was uh, you know defeated Reed City in the playoffs last year. Only lost three guys from that team, three starters from that team. Can you talk a little bit about some of the strengths of this team, you know, athletically? Uh, it starts up front, like Reed City, uh, uh, Greg was talking about. They got some big boys up front. They can move too. You know, they get out on the you know sweep, and you know I don't know if, how many defensive backs like seeing you know 210, 220 pound, you know even bigger come running at you, cause, and they can move. You know, so everything starts up front for them. But they also have two good backs, uh, Zach Knight and Rio Heinzman, who rushed for over 100 yards each against Holton. You know, so they and they're kind of I don't want to say small, but behind that line they're small, and they, they can kind of hide their way and kind of weave their way through. So they're, 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 that's a good combination for them. All right, guys, can uh, we'll start with Brandon? Who do we got this week? I'm gonna go with Chip because they're at home, and I think they have a lot to prove to themselves, and this is gonna be a good stepping stone, good measure. All right, Bob. Uh, despite all the firepower for Nuego, I'm going with Chippewa Hills. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've got Nuego in this one. I think uh, it's uh, too much firepower for Nuego. I think Chip keeps it very close in this one being at home. I see uh, Nuego pulls away late. 
you know, I think it's going to be a tighter game than most people think, but I do think New Eagles is going to pull away. Um, if the Warriors can establish the balance on offense that they had in week one and keep that defensive uh, play strong like they had last week, I think they'll have a chance, but I just think New Eagles will be too much in the end. Okay. Well, moving on to the college ranks now. The opener for Ferris State coming off a 7-4 and four season last year. A lot of anticipation for this year's Bulldogs team, but they run into a buzzsaw in week one like they'll probably never see again uh, against North Dakota State team that uh, if you've been watching college football in the last week, you've probably heard about them going to Kansas State on the road at night and pulling off the upset there in Manhattan. Now, Ferris State gets to travel to North Dakota and play against North Dakota State in its opener. Let's start with Brandon. Who do you got in this one? Ferris State, you know, a lot of momentum heading into this year, but this is a tall order for the Bulldogs in week one. It, it, it's a big order. Big order to try to fill for them. They're, they're going to have their hands full, and it's probably going to be a little much for them to handle. Um, you know, FSU is slated to be third overall in the GLIAC, but this doesn't matter. This is opening the season up, and it's going to be a tough match. It's, I just don't see it being able to pull it out. All right, Bob. I, I think North, North Dakota State's going to be able to pick their number offensively. I think they're going to score as many as they want. The question is, how many is Ferris going to score? Because they got a lot of skilled guys coming back on offense. I could see this being relatively close and high scoring, um, but I'm going to go with North Dakota State. Yeah, I think one of the staples of, of this North Dakota State team that has won back-to-back -back national titles in, in the FCS has been their defense. They averaged... Uh, the game only gave up 11 and a half points a game last year, and uh, Kansas State, the, the last year's Big 12 champion, averaged 1.8 yards a carry against uh, North Dakota State. That's not good news for a run-heavy team like Ferris State. They're going to have to rely on being a little bit more diverse offensively. I think they hang around for a little while in the first half, but I'd say uh, North Dakota State pulls away and uh, scores at will in the second half. Uh, you know, you guys kind of touched on everything that that I think is going to go down. I think North Dakota State is going to come out decisively, and it kills me as a former Bulldog to say that. <laughs> but I, I do think that North Dakota State is going to run away. After watching them play Kansas State last week, and like you said, the holding their rushing attacks is such a low yards per carry. That's that's the bread and butter right there for Ferris. So I like what Coach Nice is doing, but I just think uh, it's just a little too much there to start off the season. All right. Well, looking at uh, our next college game, we go to the Division One ranks. Notre Dame traveling to Michigan under the lights for the second time in history. Everybody remembers uh, last time Michigan Stadium's first night game happened, what happened in that game. One of the more exciting finishes uh, in recent memory for Michigan. Starting with Brandon, do we see the same type of excitement this year under the lights and who do you got winning this one? I think anytime they're, they're going to be playing under the lights in Michigan, it's going to be a great night for football. And it usually is anytime you're in the big house. But I, I see Notre Dame coming in and giving Michigan a big challenge, uh, being able to run, being able to pass. It's going to cause a little bit of problems with the defense, I think. Uh, I see Notre Dame just squeaking out a win. Okay. All right, Bob? It pains me to say Notre Dame's going to win. <laughs> um, but I, I, I think Notre Dame's going to win. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Well, yeah, I think the, the big matchup that you need to look at is Notre Dame's defensive tackles, two All-American defensive tackles, and, and to it, Knicks against a young interior Michigan offensive line. That's going to be a big difference. But they do not have anybody like Devin Gardner, like Michigan has, who can make plays and scramble outside of the pocket. I think that's enough for him to make a couple plays in this game, which I don't think you're going to have to make very many in a low-scoring game like this. I say Michigan squeaks one out under the lights in front of the home crowd. I, I too will go with Michigan slightly. I think it's going to be one of those games that's just like any other Big Ten game, you know, knock down, drag out, and it's just going to be kind of ugly at times. But I think everything that's going to come down to is if Gardner can limit turnovers. I think that's the big thing in this game. So if he can stay from turnovers, stay from making interceptions, I think uh, Michigan has a chance to come out with a win. Okay. Now on to uh, our comic relief uh, segment of the show where we talk about the Detroit Lions opening week for the Lions they're hosting the Minnesota Vikings team that they couldn't handle last year for some reason what's going to be different this year Brandon and who do you have winning uh, against the Vikings and uh, Detroit this week I, I don't see any difference this year um, Minnesota is still going to have Adrian Peterson and he's going to be the big guy uh, he's going to be who the game's going to be about 
Uh, it's not going to be about Calvin Johnson or Reggie Bush. Um, we, we know what to expect out of Matthew Stafford and throwing it 60 times a game. Uh, Adrian Peterson's electrifying out there. So um, despite being at home, despite all the moves that they've made and the improvements, however marginalized they may be, uh, I see Detroit losing. Okay. Bob, who do you got? I'm picking the Lions, and I'm not really sure why. I, I, I'll, I'll say because they're home. It's the first game. You know, optimism's high. Um, but this, I think, will be a, one of those entertaining games, week one games, and there's plenty in the NFL this year. Um, but this is going to be one of them. I think this is going to be come down to the end, uh, you know, maybe a late field goal by Akers to win it. It's going to be in that ballpark. Yeah, I, I'm going to put me in the category of picking the Lions and having no idea why, but I am going to pick Detroit. I think the defense is going to be improved this year. I, I think the, the moves that they've made there, they've upgraded a lot of their talent. Um, I don't think that has any bearing on this week at all, but I do find uh, the Lions finding a way to win this one against a, a Minnesota team that's uh, not one of the tougher teams that they're going to face this year. I uh, also was a glutton for punishment. I will have to go with the Lions as well. <laughs> I, I am interested to see the matchup between the Vikings defensive line versus our offensive line. You know, you got Riley Reef, second year left tackle coming in there. His first start, you know, as a full-time guy. You got the guy uh, Warford, the rookie right guard coming in there. And you got Jason Fox coming in at right tackle there to replace Coster Cherilis, who was definitely not my favorite line anyway, so I'm all right with that. But. <laughs> I do think um, I think if Stafford can kind of iron out some of those inconsistencies he had there in the preseason, I mean, given they didn't have Calvin Johnson in the lineup, but I do think that we're going to see, obviously, a lot of Calvin Johnson, a lot of Reggie Bush out of the backfield, and I think Detroit will s sneak out with one, like uh, Bob said, you know, maybe a David Akers field goal there at the end, hopefully not like how he was in San Francisco <laughs> last year. But um, I, I do feel that the Lions will start out with a, with a win against the Vikings, and it's going to be tough because I think uh, – that last wild card spot in the uh, the NFC might come down, and you might have the Bears, Vikings, and Lions all battling for second in the NFC North there, and it might come down to that. So, okay. all right, uh, you know, rounding out this week's program, we have the return of the game ball segment. Each one of us selects one of the high school standouts from the previous week. We're going to start with Brandon. Who is your game ball for this week? My game ball this week goes to Hunter Conley over at Chip. Uh, he was involved in all three of the. Uh, Warriors touchdowns had 100 yards passing and 100 yards on the ground. Great job. My game ball goes to Robert Berge up in Everett. Uh, 14 tackles, an interception, helped Everett get off the season on a strong start with a big win over Sutton's Bay. And he'll have to do more like that if the Wildcats have any success this year. Yeah, I'm going to stay on the defensive side of the ball uh, for Baldwin. 46-0 uh, winners against Hale. Big part of that was Chance Sherritts Hayes had seven tackles and four sacks from the defensive end position. Um, you know, going from the game I was at last week, I'll have to give my game ball to uh, John Green at Reed City. He really established himself right off the bat there in the first half and really got the Reed City at rush attack going. You know, ended the game with 191 yards and three touchdowns, and that was pretty much all in the first half. So anytime you can uh, have a performance like that in the first half, hats off to you. All right, that's gonna do it for this week's show. As always, make sure to check out Saturday's edition of the Pioneer for all of the details from our prep coverage or visit BigRapidsNews.com.